you know, growing up, I always wondered if there was a way that I can find myself or follow follow my steps and see where it would take me. Well, in today's days, that is not the problem for many of us. As today's guest, we have Adele Alvarez. She has been an educator for over 20 years. She earns a bachelor's degree in English from San Jose State University. She has a master's degree in education from CSU East Bay. She earned her credentials and has worked with at youth risk in the high school setting. She is a, currently a, a, a vice principal at an elementary school, having attended four different high schools and overcoming her own challenges. She knows what it's like to struggle in school. She wants to teach and give back to her community and inspire teenagers to pursue their goal and dreams. Adele Avarice is also a, a mother of two amazing young adults. Currently, her son is working and her daughter is studying environmental policies at UC Davis. Each of them took the path that has best that was best for them. Much of the advice offered in her book is the same she would give to her own two children. Today, she is here to introduce her book, Follow Your Heart, a guidebook for teens that, that was published in 2020. In this amazing book, she retells stories from her own childhood and teenage years. She also shares with her readers the stories of some of the most at-risk students. Many served time in the juvenile hall system. Others have been involved with gangs and been shot or killed. Many of those students struggled and did not always see school as a place to learn and succeed. Many did not even consider graduating from high school a possibility. However, she has seen many students find success by following some of the tips she gives in her book, Follow Your Heart, a guidebook for teens. When she began writing her the book, she hoped she could have she could change that one student today. She hopes to change the world one student at a time. Please welcome our guest today, Adele Alvarez. Thank you, Manny, for having me. It's been a pleasure to be here, and I'm really excited um, to be here and put my story out there to people. So it's, thank you. It's a great um, honor to have you on the show. Like I say to many of my guests, how are you doing today? How's I'm good. It's been, you know, very busy at work. You know, we have students that have come back and, uh, you know, and it's every day is a um, challenge, but it's also exciting to be there. And I'm happy now to be putting out my book and getting it out to, you know, people so that they can start reading it. So uh, now that you have, you published your book late 2020, December. So it's fresh in the market right now, correct? Yes, it just came out November of 2020. You know, I was kind of excited about that because, you know, 2020 was a hard year for a lot of people with the pandemic and schools closing and um, a lot of people were going through hardships and um, what most people would think was a challenging year. Uh, for me ended up being a really good year because it gave me the time to put out the book, Follow Your Heart. And, um, you know, it, the first chapter is all about obstacles and the challenges that we face. And so um, this pandemic has definitely been a challenge and an obstacle. And so, you know, the, you know, it's kind of looking at those obstacles and being able to dive into them and saying, hey, we can get past it. We can move forward and we can um, you know, follow our hearts and still achieve our dreams. So when I saw that it said published 2020, I was super excited. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, like you mentioned, it's been, I mean, it's not a, the best year we can all say, or was, because we're in 2021 already. I, I was stuck back there. Um, it was a great, I mean, I don't want to say it was all good, but it, it was a great year for most of us. You know, I took advantage of the podcast and then you publish your first book, which I see you have in the background, a couple stacks back there. I do. This is the um, book that I have, Follow Your Heart. And this, uh, sorry, the glare's there, but it took 10 years to write this, Manny. So if I can make my dreams come true in 10 years and work really hard, um, so can anyone else, you know, and I know you, you know, you're young and you're starting your podcast and you're doing great things. So it sounds like you're already following your heart. So, you know, keep up that good work. And thank you. So now that we talked about the book, who, who was the book written for? I know in my intro, you said one student. Yeah, when, you know, a lot of times when I went into teaching, I said I wanted to um, change the life of one student. You know, I said, if I can make a difference in just one student's life, um, it'll be worth it. 
you know? And so a lot of the messages that I give in this book, I give to many of my students and I've seen a lot of them struggle, but I've seen a lot of them succeed. And so my goal was um, to reach as many students as I can and, and teach them the skills to be successful, to overcome those obstacles and to, um, you know, reach those, um, you know, goals that they've set out for themselves, you know, not let things hold them back. So when I wrote it, it was written primarily for um, high schoolers, because that's what that was my background. Um, but now that I've also been an administrator in elementary, I realized, you know, a lot of times kids are making decisions around uh, fifth or sixth grade, they're starting to kind of choose their path. Do I want to make good choices? Or do I want to make bad choices? Right? Yeah. And who am I going to hang around with? And are those people going to um, be positive or negative influences? Um, and so it's all about choosing that path that's right for you. And that's why kind of if you see it again, I have the road on there. Um, yes. You're making the path that that's right for you. And I've noticed that in sixth grade, but um, lately I've had a lot of adults read it. It's pretty much from sixth grade all the way to the age 25, but I'm having a lot of people, 40s, 50s, 60s say, hey, I can still learn from these lessons. So it's for teenagers of all ages. So and, um, and counselors, oh, and I wanted to add, you know, counselors, teachers, you know, administrators, um, people that are working with children or have children. So, so those are some people that may want to read this book. So it's never too late to learn at any age. No. Actually, I have a question that came up right now. Okay. I noticed your book cover. Does that have a meaning, you know, being a little lighter, more to one side and a little darker to another? You know, I'm so glad you noticed that, Manny, because I wondered if people were going to notice that. And um, if you look on this side, it's a little darker and this side's a little lighter. And you really can't tell who, what direction the yeah looking at and I have this great story um, you know with the pandemic I wanted to have a big party and sign the book and I didn't know who or where I could sign it because everything was closing and you're not supposed to gather in big groups yeah so I went um, to the downtown area in Redwood City where I grew up and I told people to come and purchase the book and I signed it and this one of my former students and you'll read about him in the chapter mindset matters um, he bought the book and he looked at it and he goes, Hey, who's that on the front? And I said, Oh, you know, it could be any teenager. It, it, it's not just one particular person. And he said, well, that looks like me. And when I was in high school and, and that's my hair and that's how I looked. And he goes, what direction is he looking in? And I said, what do you mean? What direction is he looking in? He's looking at the light, you know, this side. Yeah. And he goes, are you sure? And I said, well, what direction do you think he's looking at? And he said, I think he's looking maybe at the dark side. And I said, well, I prefer to think he's looking at this side, right? But that's, yeah. it's about those choices in life, you know? And um, it's about making that. And I remember I started to cry because when I picked this cover, I wasn't really sure if it was the right cover. Um, but after that conversation, I realized I made the right choice, you know, so yes, you get to be the person in the middle, you're on the road, deciding which path you want to take the good one or the bad one. And you know, Manny, the choices like the ones you're making to be so young and do a podcast and teach people sounds to me like you're choosing the light path, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's my goal for all teenagers. Well, if I want a second opinion, that was probably one of the perfect covers for the book. Thank you, Manny. Yeah, I, I, I was looking at it, and when you said road, I was connecting the dots. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm glad. I was hoping that was going to get across. Yeah. So, thank you. so what, what was the inspiration behind your book? Well, I wanted to um, inspire teens to shift their mindsets, right? From that dark to the light. I wanted yeah. them to shift their mindsets and, that, and know that they could achieve success even when they face a lot of obstacles in their lives. And, and part of that, um, if you look on the inside of the book, there's nine chapters. And so each of those nine chapters teaches teenagers how to overcome certain challenges that they might face in high school or in life. And so if they do that and they complete the activities in the book, um, they should be able to make some of the choices that lead to the lighter side of the book. <laughs> Okay, so um, a lot of things that I notice with people, even myself, when they write or talk, you know, anything in general that mm -hmm. involves giving back or giving to the community, they they do it because off of personal experiences. 
So mm-hmm. you're here giving advice to these teenagers or a high school perspective, high school teen. Did you have any, did any of these experience connect to you that inspired you to write this book? Well, you know, Manny, I, I grew up in a middle-class, you know, neighborhood and my mother was a single mother. Um, and she raised me and my brother in a small one bedroom apartment. And this one bedroom apartment, you know, I slept with my mother in the same bed till I was about 15. And uh, my, my brother had a, a bed on the side, like a mattress, you know, and, you know, during the summers, we'd have these bugs that were flying on the wall. Um, sometimes the septic tanks didn't work. Um, you know, near the end, when I lived there, there were cockroaches, you know, and even though if you were to look at it from the outside, you would think that was terrible. <clears throat> to me, that was home, right? To me, that was the place that I was happy. Um, that's where my family was. All my family lived within a mile radius. Um, but, you know, my mom worked six days a week. Hey. And um, we were the first ones being dropped off at daycare. And we were the last ones being picked up. And those were some of the challenges that I had to face. And, you know, um, because my mom wasn't always around, I started um, making bad choices like the cover. And um, I, I started spending time with gang members, um, you know, people that sold drugs, uh, guns, you know, made, went to jail. And I wasn't making the right choices. And so um, I ended up uh, going to four different high schools, you know, and, and at one of these high schools, Um, it was a Catholic school and I was getting in trouble and the nun one day, you know, she grabbed me by the wrist really hard. Um, and she said, you're never going to be anything. You're going to be just like all those other Mexicans. Um, you're going to be nothing, you know? Um, you know, when I think about it, it makes me sad because I think of the power of the words that somebody can speak that can damage you. And I remember I pulled away from her and I ran home. And when I got home, I told my mother and my mother went and talked to the the nun and, you know, growing up Catholic and her being a nun, when my mother asked her, if she said that to me, she denied it, you know? Um, And so I just was not happy there. And I left and I went to another high school and then another high school. And then I ended up graduating on an island in Washington state. Um, with a senior class of only nine students. Wow. So I definitely um, faced a lot of obstacles. Yeah, you know, uh, you just telling me that, you know, with a uh, single mother, you reminded me of when I used to live at middle school, elementary, I lived in a studio apartment. Same thing, uh, four people in a king size bed. Yeah, uh, It just bring, brought back all those flashbacks. You know, and then when people tell you, you know, it is, it's heartbreaking when people tell you, especially when they bring in your heritage, you know, you Mexicans, you're not going to do nothing, you know, you're going to end up like everyone else. It's just sad to think about it, how people talk or say things like that. But then again, that motivates me to, both motivates me and I can see it motivated you in a way to continue pursuing and giving back. It did because, uh, you know, when I teach, I, I try to be mindful of what I say to students. And I tell, you know, I always believe that anyone can choose the path that leads to the light, right? Anyone can make a good choice. Um, but you have to find mentors. You have to find good people in your life that um, can push you to be successful. You know, I know for you, you know, I know Miss J, you know, your teacher, your former teacher inspired you to, to achieve some of your dreams, right? And I'm sure there were others that inspired you and I yeah. have many that inspired me as well. Yeah, so now that we talked about you growing up, you know, when you were teaching, you know, what were some of your mentors along the way? Well, you know, um, in the book, Follow Your Heart, um, I talk about my math teacher. Um, in the book, I call him Mr. Numbers, right? Yeah. I mean- <laughs> I, I hated math, Manny. Don't tell people that. But um, I would go to his class and I'd say, I hate math. And he would say, oh, no, you love math. <laughs> and I would say, I can't do this. And he would say, you can do this. And I would say, it's too hard. And he would say, um, oh, this is easy. you know. And he would make me repeat that. Um, but the way that I met him, I was on this little island and... Um, 
I was in his math class and he realized that I didn't know how to do the math. I think I was put in like an algebra two and I didn't know how to do the math. So he bumped me down to algebra one, <laughs> which I hate to say. Yeah. And, um, and one day he came up to me and he said, Hey, um, Adele, are you going to come to after school tutoring today? And I said, sure, I'll be there. Um, but when the bell rang, guess who was the first one on the school bus? <laughs> you know what? We were a little lot here. Yeah, that was, like, was me. Were you the same? <laughs> I had my language teacher. I haven't told anyone this. But so at the time in middle school, I had a stepfather. He would go in after work at 6.30. So I had two options. Take the bus and possibly wait forever to get to school or go in at 6 30 with my, my stepdad would drop me off wake up at 6 5 every 5 30 every morning be at to at 6 30 i uh, go to this like language arts kind of like where you tutoring not tutoring but you work on more english and um for the longest i don't know if they noticed or they just gave up I, I would always be at school at 6.30, but never in that room, just hanging out in the lunch table, sitting down. Did you ever end up going? I probably went to a couple. Yeah. And and that that's what happened to me. I didn't go. And then the second day he, but you know, he was never rude. The second day he said, are you coming today? And I said, yes, I'll be here after school. And then guess who was the first one on the bus again? <laughs> yeah, that, that was me. You know, they were never rude to me, like, like kind of like you. But yeah. then I just started showing up more often. Exactly. That was me. I think on the fourth day, he asked me and I said, all right. And I put my head down, you know, and I walked yeah. to the class. But um, that led me to go to his classroom every day for about one or two hours. Um, and he would tutor me. And then I would say, I hate math. And he would say, you love math. <laughs> and I would say, I can't do it. He would say, you can and then I would have to walk like three or four miles home, Manny, to go home after and eat dinner and then do my math homework. And I remember walking home and I would be like, God, I hate math. And then I'd be like, oh, I love math. You know? <laughs> but um, he was the one that inspired me. And, and years later, when I became a teacher, um, I followed his lead. You know, yeah. I would stay after school with kids. I always shifted their mindset to be more positive. If they said they couldn't do it, I would tell them that they can um, you know, I made sure that I was available a couple times a week after school to help them. And um, eventually that's kind of where I got the stories that come into follow your heart, you know, and you'll read, you know, later on, you'll hear about Ivan, um, who um, he's going to have an interview at the end. And he talks about, you know, his involvement with gangs and drugs and alcohol and how he turned that around. And you'll hear about my other student, Luis, who never thought he'd go to college and um he's going to graduate next year with a um, bachelor's degree so that's um, amazing so that that's i think his inspiration inspired me to write the book and and get stories to write follow your heart and then those uh clips would be at the end of this podcast but moving on forward you know you talked about ivan and Lisa a little bit right now i was yes. about to ask what is the advice you gave these students who are struggling or facing but, challenges. Well, you know, one of the things that I learned, um, the last chapter in Follow Your Heart is that change takes time, right? And so when you want to make um, a change for the better, when you want to choose the path that leads to the light, right, to the success, um, it's going to take time, right? And I think you've seen that maybe even through the podcast, right? Taking yeah. the time to, to get people to write the questions, to make the time, um, you know, all those changes take time. You know, that, that group that you didn't want to go to, you know, eventually you had to start going, you know, and making those choices. Um, so it's, it's being committed to something, whatever it is, um, and taking mm -hmm. the time to do it. Um, the lesson I learned from Ivan, the boy that I talk about in this book that went to a military boot camp is um, we both learn you have to want it yourself. Um, I cried so many times for these students. I wanted them to change. And I, I learned after working with him for the last 10 years, you have to want it. If you don't want it, no one can make it happen for you. Um, the one most recent lesson that I've learned is you got to praise yourself for your accomplishments. You know, Because when it took me 10 years to write this book, 
it was a struggle, right? Editing, yeah. writing, fixing, designing the cover. Um, and so once you have it done, you want to celebrate that. And so that's part of the, the book signing, celebrating those successes and, and just remembering to do the work. You know, in the, in the book, I have activities and they have like um, the infinity symbol, you know? Um, and when you do the activities, um, like for example, if you're learning how to resolve conflict, um, you're not going to get it right the first time. And so you have to keep practicing over and over again. And so I put activities in the book that will help you to achieve some of the successes. And now that you mentioned your activities, um, man, talk, give us a little bit more about details. I mean, I don't know any of them, you know them all, but um, if it's possible to do at least one in the podcast. Yeah, we can do one right now if you're willing yeah, to. Yeah, I'm willing. A little vulnerable, Manny. Yeah, I'm willing. Um, all right. So one of the ones that I talk about, well, the title's called Follow Your Heart, right? And so um, students hate when I do this. You have to build trust. But um, one of the things that I ask, um, and Manny, I don't know, but let's trust, uh, test it out with you. So close your eyes for a second. Uh, I'm a little right. nervous already. I know. <laughs> and so you want to close your eyes for a second. And I want you to think about something you really love or somebody you really love. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Not, okay, that changes the. Yeah, think of someone—a family member, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever you know in life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People are doing this activity. I want you to think of your, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, um, a mentor you have. Think about them. Okay, and then Manny, as you're doing that, um, think about where do you feel that love? Do you feel it in your stomach? Do you feel it in your chest? Do you feel it in your shoulders? Do you feel it in your head? Do you feel it in your heart? Right here. All right. So do you want to share, Manny? Where did you feel it? I actually felt it. Or I can't really see it, but down below where my heart, that area, the like left you, side of my like you kind of area. Yeah, yeah, you feel it in this area, right? And, and it I, has like a warm feeling. I have that feeling. Okay. And you're smiling as yeah. you're thinking about was, it. So... So that's what a good decision feels like. That's how following your heart should feel, right? Okay, but now let's try it one more time. So close your eyes, right? Oh, okay. So if you close your eyes, now this is something. Think about a food you hate. Oh. Think about a food you just can't look at, you don't want to take. Oh, look at. All right. This, this. Or think about a negative experience you've okay, had. Okay, I, I like that better. I mean, food, I... Okay, or think about a negative experience you've had, an obstacle that you faced or a challenge or somebody that's made it challenging for you in life, right? And as you're thinking about that, now think about where do you feel it? Do you feel it in your stomach? Do you feel it in your chest? My, you my left hand. Okay, and, and some a lot of boys will say that and their hand will like clench. Where does yeah. your hand clench? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like that punching feeling, right? Yeah. A lot of boys will say, I felt it in my fist. Yeah. Um, and so um, it it shifts, right? And it doesn't feel good. Can you describe what it felt like? I felt, so I had my hand like this down below. Okay. And once I thought about it, my hand clenched and I felt pressure, power tightening up. And, and that's, and that's part of following your heart. So when you have a decision to make, right. Um, for example, do I, do I do my homework or do I go outside and play basketball or video games or something? Close your eyes for a minute and ask yourself, where do you feel it? Right. If it's in your heart area, then, you know, Hey, I need to do my homework right now, but I can always play basketball later. I can always play video games later. Right. Yeah. Um, you may not want that, but your heart is saying, do that now, right? Um, if if you're in high school and somebody you you know you've never done drugs and somebody says, hey, you want some marijuana, um, and you feel your fist kind of tightening, right? Or you that's feel sad. that pressure in your gut, um, that's your own heart telling you, I don't want that, right? That's you know you got to listen to your own conscience and um, you want to make those right choices. And so part of the activities that I teach in the book is how to, how to listen to your heart. You know, I have one for how to overcome obstacles. You know, I have an activity for how to resolve conflict with your teachers, with your friends, with an enemy, with, instead of fighting, how do you talk about it, right? Um, 
I have um, activities for creating a future, um, designing your goals, you know, building a vision board where you put all the things you want to accomplish for the year. I have another one where you list the things that you're grateful for. And so each of this is also to help you to get in tune with where do I, how do I feel about it? How am I making the choices? And again, those choices that lead to the light, right? And so, um, and so that's just one of the many. So if, if you do them all, and sometimes you have to do them over, like I said, that's why there's an infinity. Um, you know, you keep doing it until you finally don't need to read the book anymore. Right? Yeah, I, I appreciate that activity. It, it helped in a way. Um, so you reference a lot of books in yes. your book. Uh huh. What is one book that inspired you the most? So if you go to the back of the book, um, there's all the books that I read over the last 10 years that inspired me to, um, to um, write this book. And so at the beginning of every chapter, I write about a, a different book or a movie synopsis, you know? And um, the one that really inspired me, and I'll share this story, um, what really prompted this was I had a friend and um, one day, you know, I, I don't know if you like getting books for Christmas, but I didn't like getting books for Christmas. I mean, <laughs> at a younger age, probably not. Yeah, when I was younger yeah. and I was, I was already a teacher, but a friend of mine came and um, she said, hey, I bought you a book for Christmas. And it was The Four Agreements right? And by Don Miguel Ruiz. And I, I read it and it was four simple laws to live um, by. It was like, be impeccable with your word, do your best. Um, I can't remember the other two right now, but it was four simple rules to live by. And when she gave it to me, she goes, you better read this book. You know, don't just let it sit on your shelf, which is what I'm asking you guys to do with mine, right? Yeah. You follow your heart. And I remember I read it, but I was a little upset. And um, because I was like, oh, who wants a book for Christmas? But yeah. when I finished it, it changed my life because I started paying attention to the words that were coming out of my mouth. I started realizing that I'm going to do my best every day and every day is going to be a little different, right? Um, and so from there, I just started reading more books. And, um, you know, Mindset was another one. That one came to me with a teacher who called me one day out of the blue to thank me for helping him to become a teacher, and he said, hey, I have a book you should read. And I said, what is it? And he goes, Mindset by Carol Dweck. Um, and I read it and it was about shifting your mindset in life and, um, and saying, you know, instead of I can't, all the things that my math teacher taught me, Mr. Numbers, instead of saying I can't, it's I can. Um, I hate math to I love math. You know, I'm not there yet. Um, and so she um, taught me to shift that. And, and that's part of also the reason I became an administrator because I wanted to, you know, my mindset shifted about it and I wanted to become um, a leader and help others. So um, those are just a couple of them. Yeah. Um, but if you read them, they'll expand your knowledge to all the things that I, my daughter always says, um, follow your heart is like the cliff. I'm always the cliff note version of those books. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how this universe or this world works. But your math teacher, you know, I lived through the same thinking, you know, my brand, Manny Can, is switching the word can't to can, you know. I, I mean, love I don't it. know how it works. I don't know how this universe works. I mean, two different cities, he's upstate and I'm down here in Southern California. And you're, and you're resonating with these stories that I'm sure yeah. you know what you're saying. You're like, like, I've been there. I've been there. I can relate, you know. Yeah, and pretty interesting. Another and Manny, I, I also appreciate you saying that because, you know, when I wrote it and I was putting it out there, I said, are other people going to understand that? And and it sounds like you already resonate with it. And, and you're just that one person that yeah. we talked about at the beginning. So, you know, and, and that's what I love about your logo. When you say if anyone can, Manny can, because, um, you know, I think you've overcome some obstacles too, right? What are I mean, what are some of the ones that you've overcome? Well, okay, so now, you know, changing your mindset, we're talking about that. You know, when I was in fifth grade, mm -hmm. I had, my fifth grade teacher was always like, she was a big Stanford fan. She mm -hmm. wanted all her students to become engineers, go to Stanford. And uh, I always played around like, yeah, yeah. And then once I got to sixth grade, before meeting Miss J and all my other mentors, I would always put myself to blame that I was never going to go to college I was never going to do nothing much. I would just simply say no, or I would say, oh, I'll have to see what my doctors, you know, because I would put my disability first 
before putting what my heart wants. And then I met Miss J and out of nowhere now, I'm attending local community college, starting podcasts, you know. I mean, I still face challenges throughout the day, but my mindset has changed from when I was just a young boy to now being a, going into the adult stages. You know, and, and Manny, you know, and, um, that's a great story because, you know, you've seen the obstacles you face, but now look at your, your logo, Manny can, and, and you've shifted that mindset to say, I'm going to college, I'm going to get my degree. I've done a podcast, um, you know, and, and you're almost unstoppable now, right? Cause it's yeah. all up here. It's all in that mindset is choosing that, that path that's right for you, you know? Um, and later on, um, at the end of this podcast, you're also not just going to hear from my former student, Ivan, that I wrote about in the book that went to a military boot camp. Um, but you're going to meet Luis and Luis is actually going to be in book number two that I'm, I'm starting to write. I didn't think I had it in me, but, um, in book two, it's about taking those small steps, just like you, yeah. those small steps to, to achieve success and to shift that mindset. Um, and, and, you know, Luis, um, he was in the gangs. Um, he had long hair when I met him, a saggy pants. And, um, you know, he, I, I remember one time in class, he even cussed out loud, you know, he said a, a bad word in front of everybody. Um, you know, he was failing almost everything. And, you know, I started talking to him and working with him, just like Miss J helped you. And he eventually graduated. And like I said, next year, he's going to have his bachelor's degree. You know, so if you can, you know, and he anyone. can, anyone can, but it's, it's finding the right mentors. It's reading the books. Um, it's listening to the, the right song at the right time, you know, and, and, and choosing to, to spend time with people that bring you up and not down. Right. Like, yes. you know, like Miss J or, or my Mr. Numbers. Right. Yeah. And, and not listening to people like the nun that, that says you can't, right. Cause there's still people that are going to be out there that are going to yeah. say, you can't do this, right? It's part of the life process, I say, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I still face obstacles and challenges. But if you were to look at me, if you were to put the same mindset I had back when I was just a 12, 13-year-old, saying, oh, I can't do that because of my disability, doing the things I do now aside on the podcast and networking, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I still have to, you know, follow through with my doctors, go to school, and get the infusions, but my mindset changes. Like you said earlier, you gotta do it if you want it. Yeah, yeah. And Manny, if you don't mind sharing, um, what is your disability? Uh, so I, I said it a lot, but it doesn't mind. <laughs> it's called Morkel Syndrome Type A. It's, it's a rare disability. It is one out of 3,000 that I get it. So I, I met a couple of people with the same condition, but it's just, it's rare when you see one, you know, you could say that person has it because it could be similar to other conditions, mm -hmm. but you're not sure they have it till, you know, for sure they had it. Yeah. And, and now you're saying I can do anything even with that disability. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. And, and you're saying, I'm choosing the, this path. Right? I'm choosing <laughs> that path, exactly. Yeah, and, and that, see, and that's where, that's where, like, even you inspire me, you know, in a way, because if, you know, you can do this, and there's people that don't have disabilities, or there's people that are facing personal challenges, you know, they just have to find the people that'll shift the mindset. And so, you know, um, I would encourage people to, to read, you know, follow your heart and start to, you know, say they can achieve those. That's success. exactly what I tell my younger siblings. Okay. I have a, a teenage sister, so I'm be in that talking a lot moment, you know, cause that's when, I mean, a teenager decides, you know, what they're going to do. Exactly, exactly. And, 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 you know, one thing, you know, that I've talked about with friends, 
once you learn those lessons, you know, and you say, I can do it, you know, Manny can, or, you know, Adele Alvarez can, um, then you go and become a mentor for somebody else, which is exactly what, what I would love Ivan to do, Louise to do, you know, you've learned some of those tools. So now do something for someone else and help them to grow. And in my book, I talk about, um, there's a tree or a ladder and we're all moving up the tree, right? We're all moving up the tree and we want to get to the top. Um, but here's the problem. The top can be a little lonelier, right? And at the bottom, that's where the party's at, you know? Yeah. And that's where people are going to be like, hey, let's drink, let's party, let's do drugs, let's have fun, you know? Let's not focus on our goals and our, um, you know, things. And so you have to be strong enough. You have to have the willpower to say, I can't right now because I, I got to work on my goal. I got to climb that's that That's something I learned. I had to learn how to say no. Exactly. You know, it's, I'm a very outgoing, easy person. If you ask someone about me back then, you know, it, it's been hard for me to say no, but you learn. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one thing, Manny, you asked me earlier about an activity that you could do, um, you know, and, and this is something that, and I don't know if, you know, you want to just share out loud, but I tell people start thinking five years ahead right? Where do you see yourself in five years? Do you see yourself with that degree? Um, do you see yourself, you know, um, on finishing the second book for me, you know, like, um, you know, do I see myself as a principal? Do you see yourself, you know, um, with many podcasts, you know, yeah. going viral? So, so if you put it out there and I'll ask you even, you know, spur of the moment, what's uh, one or two things that you see for yourself in five years? Five years from now, uh, I'm 18 now. 20, like 23 years old. I remember those days. <laughs> I'll be 23. You know, it's hard to think about what I'm going to do in five years, but what I'm doing now, and if I'm in the right path, hopefully I am going to get a degree and graduate in communications with journalism at. <laughs> hopefully transfer to the university of my dream, which is San Diego State. You know, yeah. hopefully get a job or an internship whether it's a local TV station or reporting for a high school sport, you know. And then obviously with the podcast, I want to, it's a big goal, but mm -hmm. hopefully instead of being in my room, we're at an actual studio decorated and mm -hmm. COVID's gone, we can have fly or bring our own guests in exactly. the studio. And I want to start a, kind of like an organization, you know, give back, whether it's a scholarship or, or helping people in need. That's awesome. See, and, and all that's possible, you know, in, in my book, Mindset Matters, you know, I, I, in the chapter Mindset Matters, I talk about creating that vision board, right? Putting the things on your vision board that you want to accomplish for the future, you know? Um, this is where I see myself going. And I've been doing vision boards now for over 10 years. And every year I've accomplished at least 70% of the things that I put on there because I see them every day. You know, I put the book on the vision board, you know, and every year, okay, I'm going to do the edits. I'm going to do the edits. And there were years that I had to put it on over and over and I got tired of looking at it. And I was like, when's it going to be done? Yeah. Um, you know, that's where my fist clenched, right? But, um, but it finally came out in 2020. And that's, and that's part of having perseverance, right? That's yes. part of having that, that grit and saying, I have that goal. And, and, you know, when you dream about something, you have to take action. And, and whatever, any little step counts, you know, and that's also going to be in book two, because it's once you graduate, now yeah, what? Continue. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Hi, my name is uh, Gabriel Rodriguez. I'm known as Ivan in the book, Follow Your Heart. Struggles I faced were, um, were a lot of stuff. Uh, I had a bad craze. I, did al I was doing alcohol, you know, I was doing drugs. I was just doing bad stuff in high school. Um, I went to boot camp in 2013, year 2013, uh, January for like six months. Uh, Miss Alvarez was my mentor for the boot camp at the time. So my mom you. asked me to, for her to be my mentor. Um, and she said, yes. And then the boot camp, uh, was that uh, we wake up like at five, four in the morning, the sergeants yelling at us, um, we had exercise in the morning real early and then eat, sleep, and go to school at a certain time. The boot camp changed my life in a lot of ways. Um, 
we learned um, how to, a lot of discipline, a lot of exercise, working out, and um, integrity. It's for me through high school the whole way for the last year, do tutoring two, three times a week. My moms would pick me up like at 5 p.m. after school two hours later. And um, I had a free, peri free period in high school and the Sarahs would help me through the essays for the, for the high school. I got in trouble a couple of times, you know, um, talking back to the teachers, you know, going to the principal's office, uh, getting suspended a couple of times. And she always kept me positive. She, she never gave up on me. She checks up on me uh, here and there. She's always kept me um, on the right track, positive vibes, um, you know, doing good, you know, and good, um, pretty much good counseling from her. Uh, never give up, be positive, ask questions, and have integrity. I had children today. I don't have any children, but if I do, um, I'll just be the best dad I can. Be positive, ask questions, never give up. Hey, how's it going? My name is Luis Borboya. I graduated Woodside High School in 2014. I was a student of Adele Alvarez, and I'm here to talk to you about my struggles during high school and how I came to know Ms. Alvarez. So to start off, I was a very uh, stubborn kid <laughs> when I was in high school. I didn't ask for help. I didn't do homework. I didn't take part in any activity. I didn't feel like the teachers were connecting with me. I felt alone. I changed when I, uh, when I met Ms. Alvarez in my sophomore year of high school. She helped me, you know, overcome those challenges that I, that I faced, you know, my freshman year and throughout some of my sophomore and junior year too. Connected with me personally. She asked me what I needed to succeed in class and in school. I told her that basically I didn't feel that I was a part of the classroom. I was just alienated by the other teachers. I basically told her that I, I felt alienated in class. I didn't do homework. I didn't do classwork. I didn't pay attention. I didn't read books, right? Because I wasn't interested or because I didn't feel that it connected with me, the topics that we were discussing in class. I, she reached out to me first, right, saying how she could help me. She reached out, we started talking, and I opened up to her, which was the first time in a long time that I opened up to anybody about, you know, my struggles, insecurities, and my hardships that I was going through in those times. I told her that, uh, that my, the, hardest, the hardest stuff in high school was just asking for help. That was the number one obstacle, or even considering going to college. I told Ms. Alvarez that I didn't want to go to college. School wasn't for me. She didn't take no for an answer. She basically forced me, me and my, my friend Gabriel, right? She forced us to go to, uh, to tour campuses all around the Bay. She made us take those entrance exams, the placement test. She, uh, she took us all around in the Bay Area, she took us to different uh, campuses to take placement exams uh, and introducing us to programs that can help us uh, financially and in academics. She was the person that inspired me and <laughs> a little bit forced me to go to college and I'm very thankful for her. Um, I'm doing my last semester right now in San Jose State University and back when I was a kid, I would have never imagined that I, a first generation student, would be graduating from a university right now, during these times. I went to college, uh, my first, my first uh, hurdle that I had to overcome was time management. One of the hardships I faced in, in college was time management, and Ms. Alvarez was the one to help me through it. She basically told me, you know, take it one step at a time, you know, little steps uh, go a long way. You know, in the end, you're gonna reach your goal. It took me four years to graduate from community college, community college, but it was a, it was a time where I I used to find myself, to find what I wanted to do in life, and that's when I decided to go into business, 
master's degree is going to be over in six months. I'm going to be graduating from San Jose State University with a bachelor's in entrepreneurship. As cliche as it sounds, I want to have my own business. I want to operate my own business. I want to, I want to provide for my family and my employees. Just like my parents are doing so today, I want to do that in five years. I want to open up, open up my own shop, my own store, whichever it may be. I haven't found my profession yet, but I will soon. Don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, you might, you won't look like a fool when you ask for help. That's what I, that's what I felt. You know, if I, if I asked for help, I, I was, I was a fool. You're, you're in the right to ask for help, right? That's what they're there for. Your teachers, your counselors, your, your, uh, your vice principals. Ask for, for help. Follow your heart, kids. All right. So um, if you wanted to buy my book, Follow Your Heart, you can go to Amazon and just type my name, Adele Alvarez, A-D-E-L-E-A-L-V-A-R-E-Z. And it should pop up right away. Um, you know, I'm updating my webpage right now, but you can go to uh, www.adelalvarez.com. Um, Couldn't be any easier, right? Um, you can follow me on Facebook. Just type in Adele Alvarez. And um, you can also follow me on Instagram. It's Adele Alvarez underscore rights, right? And you can even email me and tell me all the great lessons you learned from my book um, on Adele Alvarez rights at gmail.com. So I couldn't make it any easier for you guys to reach out to me or to uh, follow me or to um, share your stories with me as well. So Manny, I really want to thank you for having me on um, your podcast today. And, um, you know, thank everybody who's out there listening and um, wants to be inspired by a good book. Go out and purchase um, Follow Your Heart, a guidebook for teens. Okay. Thank and you. And then I would link all of those down below. Other than that, Follow Your Heart. And hopefully we have to see you when part two is ready to be out. Awesome. Thank you, Manny. And for this is uh, Manny Can and Adele Alvarez. And wherever you're listening to, follow, subscribe, and share with your friends. And thank you all for listening.